Hello, this is going to be a short introduction of the endgame loop. Let's not waste time and start. The most important thing to note at the beginning is that the updated black market is a must to do right now, as the rewards are one of the best in the game. Keep doing those bounties in every single map that you do, and try to aim for as much currency as you can. There is another way to get that currency, which is a unique map, tier 6 Nightmare of Calicola. After reaching Chaos Statue level 20, the end game loop begins. T10 maps are gonna be the ones that you're gonna grind the most. Did them as high level as you can without losing the clear speed. I would say around 3 minutes is not a bad start. If you are trying to min max your build, focus on the T10s depending on the authorities that you need your champs from. Otherwise, just do any. In T10 maps at Chaos Statue level 20, you're gonna be able to drop T11 maps. T11 maps themselves drop authority essences and up to tier 7 chaos orbs, and it takes sub 30 seconds to complete. And the start of the season, do all tier 11s, normal, blue, and yellows, as they drop a single chaos key each, which unlocks the new content. You can craft greater chaos maps on the alchemy bench. You need 3 keys each for every single chaos boss that exists in the game. There are 4 authority bosses in this game. Domain of Might that drops tier 8 and tier 9 chaos orbs, Land of Authority that drops high creation for crafting, Ilya Room that drops Star Fuser high upgrades for chaos star slot upgrade, and Golden Ring that drops unique artifacts and artifact essence upgrades. If you want better drops on those maps, do them at max possible level. And if you're really daring, make them legendary, even though it's not necessary for the higher drops. Traces of memory maps. There are two ways to acquire those. The first one is grinding T10 maps, or you can buy two of those every single day in the gem store. If you want to get the most out of the traces maps, do them legendary. It's really worth as the drop increases three times. It's gonna be a much faster grind. Besides T10 and T11 maps, there is Constellation of Time. This one primarily drops zodiac stones and is really good for the experience. I'm not gonna expand too much on this one, but I have a really nice guide on how to make this grind efficient. So if you're interested, go check it out. But otherwise, these maps primarily consist of requirements, which is to just activate a mystery stones on the maps. And when you do them the first time, you need to complete some dialogues. And of course we got uh, co-op content. The stream raids are basically time-gated raids that open up two times per day. You can queue up for those on the notice board. But I highly suggest don't do easy mode. Easy mode doesn't drop anything good. Do hard mode. As hard mode drops runestones and butt jump growth material and extra stuff that helps with the progression. To do this content you need shadow mirror. For each boss, those are easy grinded on the T T10 maps or any other maps. Shadow Mirror requirements increases with the clear amount because you get specific clear rewards and you get damage rewards. At 15 clears or more, getting that Shadow Mirror is gonna be harder and fulfill that mirror is gonna take more time. Guild raids are a big part of this game as you can complete 5 easy ones and 5 hard ones. Every single clear gives you gold and guild currency, which you can spend in the guild shop that helps with early progression. Also, you can buy some buffs, but they are not that impactful. But you know, even a little bit helps. Guild raids has the same bosses as the sin raids, but those are before they were all nerfed, so they are basically the, the first version of those, which were much harder, with different mechanics. In order to start the guild raid, you need 4 people at least. Completing the guild raid? can drop you a skill and link runes that are only obtainable through the guild shop. Wide Rift is a single player content where you clear the bosses. Clear rewards reset every two weeks. Difficulty gets higher with every single level as the boss gets buffs and players start stacking debuffs. There are two types of rewards, one for clearing the level and one from clearing the boss. But most of those rewards are basically growth material. This is a really nice growth material grind. So the sun raid is a new one. This basically came out today in the morning at the day of the recording. I did it once and they just got obliterated. The stats, damage and survival requirements are way too high. 
I think most of the people that are gonna clear this is gonna be the people that play standard mode. The rewards are kinda nice, you get some rune hunter coins that you can buy titles with. And you get a, a unique uh, runestone chest that you can pick up whatever uh, runestone you want. The only RNG with this is that you can't change the skill slot spot on the um, unique runestone. That's the biggest problem. But I think this is still, this is like the hardest content that we have so far. And it's gonna be really fun progressing this on season four. Right now people are saying it's bugged, but I don't think it's bugged. The problem right now is that it doesn't have a nerf timer, which is gonna be, be implemented in season four. And the boss right now is 150 level, which is the max level that it can be. So we are doing this at the hardest possible way that we can do it. But yeah, thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.